Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. It's time for another cam shootout on our 3800 V6. That's right, we're gonna compare it both naturally aspirated and supercharged, and this time we're gonna compare our little comp cam to an even bigger cam from ZCP. How did they do? Let's find out. In this video, we have a very cool camshaft comparison. We have a small comp cam versus a slightly larger ZZP cam for our 3800 supercharged V6. Actually, we're gonna compare the camshaft both naturally aspirated and supercharged. So did it make power naturally aspirated? Did it make more power supercharged? There's only one way to find out. Let's head to the dyno. Hey guys, before we get going on this video, make sure to join me live nightly, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you've got questions about any aspect, performance, cylinder heads, camshafts, any motor, doesn't have to be an LS, doesn't have to be a small block Chevy, can be a big block, can be a Honda. I've tested it all. If you've got a question, chances are I have an answer or somebody else on the live feed also might have an answer. If you've got a question, remember, join us live, 7 p.m. live on YouTube. Let's get to our video. Our first comparison of the smaller comp cam and the larger ZZP cam, which run on our NA combination. Let me take a look. This was an L67. L67 short block. We had L32 heads on it. They were freshly rebuilt. We had the uh, comp cam. The first one, this is a 510 lift. 210 to 20 degree duration split and 115 degree lobe separation angle on this combination we ran the lower l67 intake manifold the blower intake manifold and then we hollowed out the upper section the plenum basically removed the rotor pack from the m90 supercharger use that at, with a cover plate as the um, upper portion of the manifold for our na combination we used the factory mass air and throttle body assembly although we didn't use the mass air meter because we weren't employing that we we're using a holly hp management system we had the tube headers the front wheel drive tube headers used in a grand prix or buick regal those kinds of things not long tube headers like would be used in a rear wheel drive f body like a camaro or a firebird we had holly injectors and we obviously had every each of the combinations tuned to try to optimize the power output and run with the the uh, comp cam, our combination produced a peak of 247 horsepower. This is naturally aspirated and 240 foot pounds of torque. And the first thing that you might notice is the big dip here around 4,500 RPM. As it turns out, that wasn't a function of what was happening with the motor. That was a function of what was happening with the dyno. We were losing servo control there. And actually what would happen, uh, everything else is accurate on either end of that dip, the beginning and the end. But what would happen is this, this motor would actually, this combination would actually produce a kind of a flat curve going across that, that big dip. Um, the dip was just a loss in servo control. We saw that it was fairly consistent when we were testing this. Um, here's what happened when we ran uh, an upgrade on our this is this is still with the same camshaft but we ran an upgrade on the the upper like our gutted blower housing what i did was i cut out the section the v section the discharge for the supercharger just made the the whole opening bigger and it, it improved the power a little bit because we wanted to see if there was a change in flow rate you know change in power from the flow rate just by doing that and here's what happened when we did that we picked up a little bit of power and we see there's a bigger gain in the middle but most of that is just the servo thing we only picked up about three or four horsepower here it wasn't a lot which showed that that particular gain on the na combination really didn't net us too much of a gain but here's what happened with this same combination when we ran the new camshaft from ZZP. The bigger ZZP camshaft was 507 lift, so compared to 510 for the previous cam, real comparable in terms of lift. It was a 220 to 30 degree duration split, so up 10 degrees on both of those, and a slightly tighter LSA. It had 112 degree lobe separation angle versus the comp cam that was 115. And as you can see, we did indeed pick up power. The big change you're seeing here in the middle, as I said, remember that's a servo problem. We had fixed the servo problem with the other camshaft, and so it would have gone straight across, so the gains wouldn't have been what you're seeing there in the middle. But we did pick up power at the top. We went from about 250 horsepower, 249.5, up to 263.7. So just over 13 horsepower peak to peak measured from the camshaft gain. And we did get, you know, kind of gains through most of the curve. 13 horsepower isn't a ton of power to be adding from a camshaft swap. And actually, uh, quite honestly, given the change in duration, I was hoping for more than that, even NA. But what we're hoping now is that the NA combination, we see even greater gains when we run the same comparison because I ran both camshafts under boost. 
Continuing our comparison between the smaller comp cam and the slightly larger cam from ZZP, we're going to take a look at the effect on our supercharged combination. This motor obviously was originally a supercharged combination. It was an L67. We did have L32 heads on it, but the things were interchangeable. For this combination, we ran our uh, M90 supercharger, but this was a Gen 5 from the later L32. We also had it equipped with a 3-inch pulley. We had the factory uh, Gen 5 throttle body on this, slightly larger than the previous version. And again, with a 3-inch blower pulley, our combination produced a peak of 414 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 405 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we replaced the mild comp cam, which again was a 210-220 cam with a 220-230 cam from ZZP. The peak power did indeed go up. We saw gains from about 5,000 or 5,100 all the way out past 6,500. The peak power jumped up to 427 horsepower. So just like with our naturally aspirated combination, this cam upgrade netted us about an increase of 13 horsepower. Uh, we did see a little bit of a drop in low speed power below 47 or 4800. And the other thing that happened that we're not displaying here is that we did see a drop in boost when we put the ZZP cam in. Um, the change in boost down low, down at 3,000 or 3,500 RPM, was not very much. It was about three-tenths of a pound of boost. But at the top, by the time we reached 6,500 RPM, we're talking about uh, more than half a pound or more than a pound and a half. It went from 9.8 pounds or, or, or dropped down to 9.8 pounds from 11.5 pounds with the comp cam. So the CCP cam... I suspect should have made more power than that, judging by the change in boost we got. More, more times than not, when we see a drop in boost like that, we see an increase in power because that's what's happening as we see it. We make the naturally aspirated motor more efficient, which we did a little bit to the tune of 13 horsepower, but that doesn't really uh, indicate what we saw in terms of a change in boost. And I know everyone's thinking, well, yeah, but now you pull it up and you raise the boost back up to the to the uh, boost level that it was at before you made the cha the camshaft change and that would be a good idea and you could do that so you could get the boost number the same but as we saw in the previous test if you guys haven't seen that make sure to check out that video where we went from the stock cam to the comp cam and we got some pretty big uh, power gains which is why I was hoping when we did this change also that we would have saw some equal power gains at least another maybe 20 or 30 horsepower especially on the supercharged combination but this is why we test and why we didn't see uh, a big change here Maybe we need it to try an even different camshaft to get even more power from our supercharged combination. It's also important to note that both of these combinations, both the comp cam and the ZZP cam, were run with the 3-inch blower pulley and an air-to-water intercooler uh, supplied by, the, by my buddy over JPL. Um, he supplied the intercooler on loan, and we did a video up, and I had that video up where we did a back-to-back -back test of running the intercooler versus no intercooler. We showed you what the charge temperature drops were and all that. The intercooler actually worked out very well. Um, obviously, there's a limitation in the core size and stuff if you want to make a million horsepower, but for this kind of combination, with a 3-inch pulley and a cam, uh, this combination obviously worked very well and, and showed exactly what these two cams do. So now here's the question for you guys. Let me know in the comments. Should we try a different camshaft. Obviously, we also tried an even smaller blower pulley later on. We went down to a 2.6 inch blower pulley and really spun this thing up. But the other thing that we did, and that video is coming up next, is uh, what about turbocharging? <laughs> Does this camshaft work with a turbo? Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did we learn from this little adventure comparing the smaller comp cam to the slightly larger ZZP cam on our 3800 V6? We tested these cams both naturally aspirated and supercharged and got similar results. I mean, we picked up about 13 horsepower NA and about the same amount supercharged, but honestly, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping for even more power, but guess what? I was hoping for more power when we tested ported heads and we got nothing. At least with this cam upgrade, we saw some power, but don't worry, we're not done. In the next test, in the next video, we're gonna add a turbo, that's right, so stay tuned. And I guarantee you, we added a lot of power. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.